I'm going to show you five of my Jedi level tricks. I'm going to show you these things, okay? First of all, the ability to press Alt F1 and just create a chart. Brilliant, okay? The ability to add little toggles and ratings into these elements here. The ability to fill this down with a couple of clicks for five years worth of dates or using the sequence method. The ability to filter this quantity or that price column in a pivot table. You can't by default. And some magical autocorrect tricks where I can just type these in to write really useful formulas. All right, let's go. Okay, the first one, creating a default chart so that when you press Alt and F1, it just creates your chart for you. How cool is that? All right. I saw this being done by John Peltier, chart wizard, MVP extraordinaire, and I'm just showing you this as well. I'll put a link to John's details in the chat. If you want to know about, more about charts, check out John. How do we do this? Well, essentially, when you insert a chart, and you can do a boring old chart like this, okay, you can make some changes. For example, you can right click and you can edit your data series. Okay, you can change the fill color. You can change it to a pattern or a picture. You can even insert a picture, and I use lightsabers for mine. Okay, so you can do that. And then when you've got the chart you like, you can actually right click and save it as a template. Okay, and then when you want to change a chart type or pick a chart type, you go to templates. And there's my Jedi template. Okay, but the trick that John showed, you can right click on this and set it as a default. So your favorite chart settings just then get triggered. Alt F1. Brilliant. Okay, so back here, I can go back into this one, click on this, Alt F1. And there's my chart built with all my default settings. If you want to know how I built this chart, put a comment in the chat and I'll do a little quick video on how I actually built this little chart here. Okay, so that's the first little tip. Now, icons. Okay, check this out. Little slicer visual controlling these, this little visual in color as well, which is cool. So how do you do it? Well, let me show you. If I scroll across here, I've got some hidden workings all the way over here. All right. And let me just clear this filter. So all I did, set up a little table with one, two, three, four, five in it, and then added a slicer to that table. You go to the table design up in the top right, and you insert slicer, okay? And you say items, okay. So there's my slicer to start with. And then I wrote a little formula, okay? This formula here, aggregate. Why aggregate, okay? And why number four? Well, if I go into here, you see that four gives me the max, okay? Right, max gives me the max of this list. The five, okay, five ignores hidden rows, okay? And then this part is the list. So when I filter on this, the maximum visible number is two, okay? The maximum visible number, the aggregate max is three. Awesome, okay? Then in here, I use the repeat function, R-E-P-T. I put an emoji. So to put an emoji inside something, you do Windows key full stop and you've got star, okay? got whatever you want, whatever type of emoji, okay? Something like this, something like that, all sorts of options in there, okay? And then I just repeat it X number of times, so in this case, five. So that's the emojis. But then I also, if I've got two selected, I wanna show two stars and then three blanks. So again, I did a quick formula, five, so my ratings are out five, minus two, so that's the balance, okay, so three. And then again, the repeat function, and this time the emoji of a square. And then I simply joined them, text join with no space and those two cells together. 
Beautiful. Okay. Right, but then what do I do? Well, I in simply insert a shape. So insert, and I'll just go uh, shapes and a little curved box here. And then you can change this to, you know, no fill. And you can reference in the formula equals, and you can click on this and press enter. And then you can do stuff like center it and all that sort of good stuff, okay? Center, center, make this a bit smaller. And it's dynamic. How cool is that? And there's a little hack as well. After this, no one really knows about this little hack. You have to use the arrow keys, so double click. You can't click at the end here, all right? But you can use the arrow keys and then press enter, starts a new line. And you can actually write a word in here, okay? And I can click on this, home alignment middle. Beautiful. All right, there we go. Awesome. And then to get the little tabs, check this out. Go to the slicer settings. So slicer, I wanna to go to five columns. I wanna make the height of the buttons a bit bigger. Right click and go to slicer settings, which brings up this box and just turn off the display header. Okay, brilliant. We're almost there. And then there's a little trick, okay? I wanna get rid of the border. So again, slicer settings, Find a slice you like the color of, like this, duplicate it, okay? Call it no border. I'll call this no border four because I've already done one and format it with no border, okay? Click okay, click okay. And then from the slicer options, pick that new no border color. So my slice has now not got a border and check this little hack out. Drag the bottom up a little bit. See the bottoms disappear and then I can put that on top of my slicer. So play about with it for a little bit. You get the idea. And then you could do a couple. Pretty cool, eh? Right, fill series. Check this out. I wanna get this down for five years, so to the 2028. The right click, drag up, drag down trick. Who knew this was possible? So right click, drag down, drag up. There we go, series. I wanna do it in the column and I wanna stop by day, sorry, I wanna stop at the 13th of May, uh, or June 13th of May, uh, 2028. Okay, there we go, click okay, and instantly control shift down, or control down, 13th of May 28. Okay, or you can do the sequence method, equals sequence. Okay, how many rows? Uh, let's do 360. 365 times five, oops, comma, uh, one column, start at today. Enter. Okay, you would have to highlight that and format it. Or if you didn't really care about it being used in calculations, you could wrap the whole thing in a text function. So equals text, okay, and then comma, and then in the double quotes, day, day, MMM, YY. Enter. Right, pivot and filter. Okay, check this out. Um, I wanna filter this just to show everything under 250. Um, I saw Bill Jelen do this first. I've seen a few other people do it since, including uh, Chandit recently on Goodly. Um, check this out, just click in any cell, any cell down this side, and you go data, and you just turn on the filters. You've got to be in this cell, not this cell, doesn't work. It's got to be one of these cells right in the adjacent column, okay? So data, turn on the filter, there we go. And we could filter this column now by numbers uh, less than uh, 250. Click OK. Pretty cool. <laughs> All right, that's awesome. All right. Um, okay, autocorrect magic, check this out. Last one, last little tip. I wanna do uh, an X lookup of this product ID, okay, to this table here. So here we go. Rather than writing it up, XXM space, 
and it writes your XLOOKUP for you. I'll show you how to do this in one second. So what are we looking up? We're looking up this code. Where are we looking? Okay, double click on that. We're gonna look in this column. What do we wanna bring back? Okay, double click on this up here. And uh, I wanna bring back the product category, control space bar, okay, press enter. And there we go. And with this one, it's my XXM, okay? Let me just show you that, XXM. I've got the missing built in, so that as soon as one of these items, like let me put an A in here, it just says missing, okay? And then for this one, I wanna know how many missing. Let me do a B in here, obviously it can't find that. How many missing items? So I type MMM space, and that'll do a count if, double click on that. If the word is missing, press enter, there's two. Okay, awesome. I'll show you how to set these up in one second. Let me show my another one. This text join one, okay? I just wanna join this plus this, okay? So I can go TJ text join and just say, okay, I wanna include uh, that comma that. Awesome. Right, how do I do this? Um, what you do is you actually write this formula out, whatever that formula is. So let's go up here. I'll say XXM, okay. You actually write this physically yourself, copy it and go to file options and proofing. So file options, proofing, autocorrect. And you use autocorrect, you type MMM or whatever you want in there and you paste your formula in here. Okay, it's cool. It works with all sorts of wicked options including stuff like, right, are there any duplicates? Okay, so equal, so I just type DDD, okay, DDD space, and I say, right, are there any duplicates in here? Let me go and highlight uh, this column. It says, yes, there is one duplicate. All right, okay. Well, it'd be nice to know what it is, DDDL. Okay, so again, I can just double click on this. And these formulas I'll put in the, in the notes and I'll let this file be available as well. So go in here. Okay, it's that one, that's the duplicate. And if there were more, it would join them together, which is pretty cool. If I wanted a unique list, I can go U, 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 enter. Okay, and just double click on column A and then go and pick my unique list of, let's say column one, enter. There's my unique list. And I can even do magical um, text splitting. So let's say I wanna split this column into its component parts using a space as a separator. Um, I can just go TS plus, okay, TS plus, space, and I just double click and select my range, press enter, and there's my range split out. All sorts of cool little tricks. Which ones did you know? Which ones do you like? Did you learn anything new? Hope you enjoy this channel. Please subscribe, add on the notifications, and I'll catch you in the next video.